This weekend, the latest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film, Mutant Mayhem, drops in theaters. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Let me know, what did you think about Mutant Mayhem? Did you grow up with the Ninja Turtles? All that fun stuff, share it in the comment section. Now, like many of you, I grew up with the Ninja Turtles. I saw the 1990 film, as well as its sequels, in the theater opening weekend. And now it's fun to have kids of my own, and all three of them are into the Ninja Turtles. In fact, what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks is playing the video game Shredder's Revenge in our free time. We just beat the game, earned Casey Jones. And so being able to take the whole family to the press screening for this movie was just a lot of fun and special. But how was the movie? Let's get started with the good. And let's just cut straight to the chase on this one. I thought this movie was pretty great. Awesome! It just captures the youthful energy and fun of the Ninja Turtles while delivering a different version of them. It doesn't feel like it's just rehashing what came in the past. It doesn't feel like a cover band, but it feels true to the Ninja Turtles in a fresh and new way. One of the key elements of of that is that they really put the teenage back into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where they feel like immature teenagers that are in the process of still growing up. One of them, their voice hasn't changed yet. And so it just captures that teenage energy in a way that I haven't seen any previous version of the Ninja Turtles properly capture. I haven't seen all the animated shows, but of the ones I have seen and the movies I've seen, this is the best example of them as true teenagers. And to that point, it's a coming of age story, is there? struggling with their father, Splinter, who's trying to do the best to keep them safe while they're teenagers needing and wanting more freedom, wanting to explore the world and see what that looks like. And they find a way to take this coming of age story, the nature of the Ninja Turtles as teenagers, but also heroes, uh, with a father figure that wants to protect them. And they just give this very strong thematic through line in the entire movie about acceptance, judging others, assuming the worst of others, and learning to trust people in general. And it kind of explores both the ways in which we can superficially judge people as well as the good in people and how we can learn to love and accept people who are different from ourselves all while telling a very Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles type of story. In there, I mentioned Splinter as this father figure quite a bit, and they really lean into that. He's not just the wise mentor, which he is that, but they play him very much as the protective father who is not sure what to make of this world around him. He just knows that as a rat, Humans didn't immediately accept him and he's not how sure how the world will accept his boys. And so he's trying to keep them safe. And it's a very different version of Splinter than I've ever seen before, but one that actually gives Splinter himself a character arc in the film that matches the story being told, that complements the coming of age aspect for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all merging together really nicely with the themes about acceptance. And I think that's what really elevated this movie in a lot of ways is that it's doing a bunch of things with a lot of different characters, but it felt like it all came together pretty nicely. It didn't feel messy, clunky, or forced. It was like, oh, that just makes a lot of sense. This fits with what you're trying to do. And they pick like one idea that they're exploring and therefore they're able to make it a through line in all the character arcs, all the plot lines, and it feels cohesive. And because they're able to merge the plot and themes and character arcs all together into one, it makes for a really satisfying conclusion to the film. 
as you kind of resolve the big villain threat. It also is the payoff for character arcs that pays off the themes of the movies. So it's a multi-layered victory that you feel at the end of the film. And so it's just so satisfying. It's a great feel good ending that just puts a big smile on your face. That was an awful lot of time about thematic cohesiveness in a review of a Ninja Turtles movie. When it comes to our Ninja Turtles themselves, they're so charming in this youthful sense. Even the kind of way that they're drawn with their big eyes, the sort of shenanigans they're getting into as they're these kids trying to entertain themselves. Our dad is definitely not a giant rat. That makes me feel like he's a rat. They feel like a fun group of kids that you'd want to spend time with. They're learning, they're growing, they have skills, but they don't know quite what to do with them yet. And they're just very endearing in a, in a different way than I've seen them played before. And they each of them lean into their classic Ninja Turtle personalities, but even the way they do that is different. You know, Leonardo, as the leader gets to be more front and center than he normally is in these types of stories. They give him a very teenage kind of journey as the, the person trying to lead them. And what does that actually look like in a group of teenagers? Who's the person that a, an adult would trust to be the leader? And how would his peers respond to those qualities that would make an adult trust him? And they play that out kind of in the story. There's some other things kind of going on with him that just feels nice. It has a sweet little nature to it, but you know, Michelangelo's still the party dude. Raphael's still the one with the temper. Donatello's the smart one. They find ways to play that in. Just a little bit of a fresh new take on it than we've seen before with the Ninja Turtles. The other thing you have to talk about here is the animation. There's like this big revival in animation over the last few years where they're finding all of these new ways to do animation that merges different art styles, the best of modern day technology and delivering something that's different. And as my son described it as we left the theater, it's like 3D, but hand drawn. Final thing to talk about here, it can be really, really funny. Much like Mitchell's vs. the Machines, it's just a really sharp, clever script that consistently delivers laughs from beginning to end. As I mentioned earlier, I took my entire family to go see this movie. Every single one of us had an absolute blast. Kawabunga. There's a few more things to talk about here, so let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. First thing to talk about here, because the Ninja Turtles are a franchise that you connect with when you're young, you tend to have like a very locked in idea of what the Ninja Turtles are supposed to be. And they keep reinventing it for every new generation of young people. And so if you're a little bit older, lifelong Ninja Turtles fan, there's a chance that it might not just connect with you simply because it is a modernized, new, different version of the Turtles. It's different from what you grew up with and you might not like it. Another thing in here, it, it does have a good bit of I wouldn't say necessarily gross out humor, but there's a lot of ooze, icky bugs. There's a running vomit joke in the movie, uh, milking. There's a bunch of like bodily fluid type humor in here. If that's not your thing, just go in knowing that's in here. I think it's all done with wit. It's not just base level. It's set up to be really funny the way that it's done. It's handled well, but there is a good bit of bodily function, ick humor in the movie. Another thing, the movie marketed it itself as having a whole bunch of big name actors voicing these major Ninja Turtle characters. And you can just look at how many of these characters make an appearance in this. You could probably piece it together they don't all have a lot of screen time. It was a little bit dishonest the way they did some of this because some of these characters have like three or four lines. I mean, they are barely in this movie, but then they put this gigantic name from nerd culture in the trailer. Lastly, to talk about in here is that there, this isn't a good or bad thing. There is a mid credit scene. You absolutely want to stick around 
for the mid credit scene. It's both like a funny epilogue as well as teasing future things. It is a must watch segment. From there, let's move on to the bad. And I don't have a whole lot to say here because as I mentioned before, I thought the movie was pretty great. But because there are so many characters here and they're picking just a few people to kind of put front and center, some of your favorite turtles or side characters might feel like they're very much on the back burner, not getting as much time as you'd like. And that's essentially always been true with these movies, but I noticed it a little bit more because some of my favorite turtles and side characters were a little bit more on the back burner. Likewise, where it goes in the third act, I think it served the movie for the character arcs, the thematic payoff. It's not what I find on an action or villain level particularly interesting or satisfying for this franchise. I don't want to say too much and give away where the movie goes, but it kind of like cranks things up to this next level to make for this big epic threat. And as soon as that happened, I was like, mm, uh, this is not what I would have done. Even with the way that they kind of visualize some of the stuff with what happens and the concept of this going on, uh, it has an ick factor to it that I didn't enjoy. Like I said, it, it makes for a very satisfying payoff emotionally, thematically, character arc wise, but on the action level, villain level, I wasn't particularly a big fan of what they did there. Also, it's a very pop culture savvy script. And for that reason, different jokes will go over different people's heads. There's certain ones that my kids loved that I wasn't quite sure what they were laughing about. And there's ones that I laughed at that my kids didn't know what was going on. Oops. And so there's a little bit of an over-reliance on pop culture and understanding the specific references that the writers of this movie were into. As I mentioned, I was able to take my whole family to the movie and I asked my kids what they thought about it afterwards. Here's what they had to say. Chloe, what'd you think about the movie? I really liked the movie. It was really funny and it's really easy to enjoy. Karis, what'd you think about the movie? It's my new favorite movie. I liked it. I liked the animation. It was like 3D, but hand drawn. Um, the animation, it was really cool. Kind of 3D, but it was like showing that it was art. Like you could see like obvious pencil marks and, and it was really cool. Uh, there's one gag going out throughout the movie that keeps popping up to say in one word, milk. I like the part when the turtles fold their thing and like my phone I really like the characters. The only thing I would have changed about the characters is that Raphael, he isn't, he doesn't have main part to it. He's basically just shown as this crazy guy. Enough talk! I dream about fighting every night! You've got a rage oh, problem, right? Nah. It's not a problem! He just loves fighting way too much. Like many of us. Like me. So you guys had fun with the movie? Yeah! Do yeah. you recommend the movie? Yeah! When you put it all together, I thought that this was just a great Ninja Turtles movie for the entire family. Overall, I'll give this one an A- minus on the entertainment scale, a 9 out of 10, and I would say this is a must-watch movie for families. It's just a great time. In a few days, I'll be putting out my updated ranking of the Ninja Turtles movies, and I threw in a couple of non-theatrical ones in there, Batman vs. the Ninja Turtles, as well as Turtles Forever, so it's a little bit different from the ones I've done in the past. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.